Welcome scientists. We've been studying mushrooms and fungus and I have a story today called The Mushroom Fan Club. It's written by Elise Gravel. You know what I love? Walking in the woods and looking for mushrooms with my kids. It's like a treasure hunt that nature organized just for us. I'm obsessed with bizarre creatures, and mushrooms are certainly strange. They look like aliens from outer space. Mushrooms are not plants or animals. They are a kingdom of their own, the realm of fungi. Many mushrooms look like the one I've drawn here, but not all of them. They come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. Their smells differ wildly, too. Some stink horribly. Others have a delicious perfume. There are some next to my cottage that smell like maple syrup. Here are the parts of the mushroom. At the top, there's the cap. Then, spores. You can see the ring on the stalk. At the bottom is the vulva. And underground is the mycelium. When you try to identify a mushroom, you have to look under its cap. You'll find clues under there. Some have gills that are like paper-thin blades. There are thousands of different mushrooms like this, including the kinds found at grocery stores. Others have little needles, and some have tiny holes, like a sponge. It's through these various types of underbellies that they produce and release spores, which are a bit like seeds. This is how mushrooms reproduce. Some mushrooms grow in the grass, others in dead leaves or on rotten wood or even on living trees. Some are so tiny we can't even see them, and others are as big as a baseball field. I don't know them all. There are too many. There are millions of fungus species around the world. Some people know a lot more about mushrooms than I do. They are called mycologists. I am no expert. I'm an amateur. I just love looking at mushrooms. The proof that I'm no expert, I draw them with eyes. Yeah, we don't have mouths either, and we can't speak. But I'm not the only one who likes finding mushrooms. Many animals and bugs like them too. When you walk in the woods, you might encounter some of these wild mycologists. Would you like to come for a walk with us? I'll introduce you to some of my mushroom buddies. But first, I'd like you to follow these two rules. One, protect their environment. Mushrooms are often friends with the plants in the forest, helping them and many animals survive. So be gentle and don't litter, and try not to pick too many mushrooms. Leave some for the slugs and squirrels. And you know, you can always draw a picture of the mushrooms you find, or even take a photo. Number two, don't eat them. Many mushrooms are poisonous. Only grown-up mycologists know for certain which ones are safe to eat. We can make you very, very sick, and even worse. If you find a mushroom with sponge-like holes under its cap, it might be a bolete. There are many species of boletes, and some are delicious. You can find boletes in grocery store. Some boletes turn blue when we touch them. It's very pretty. Others have a slimy cap like a slug, and some have spots that look like dragon scales. Bugs like boletes a lot, so these mushrooms are often home to hundreds of tiny worms. The chanterelle is one of the finest mushrooms I learned to identify. They're very pretty, bright orange, and often grow with a bunch of friends. They're easy to recognize because their caps look like a trumpet. Instead of gills, they have little folds like an old person's wrinkles. Some mushrooms look like chanterelles but are very toxic. They are called jack-o'-lantern mushrooms. It's a pretty name, don't you think? The main difference between them is jack-o'-lantern mushrooms have real gills instead of wrinkles. Ah, morels. They are so cute. They look like an alien's brain. I love morels, and when I find some, I jump all over the place and squeal. It's silly, but I can't help myself. It's because I don't find them often. Morels like to grow where there have been forest fires. They love the ashes. 
They're hard to see because they look like dead leaves they grow on, or like pine cones. They are hide and seek champions. My daughter's favorite mushrooms are polypores. These hard mushrooms often grow on tree trunks or roots and can get pretty big. My oldest daughter collects them. We once found one as big as a plate. These mushrooms are cool because you can find them even in the winter. Here's another guy that looks like a brain. Its Latin name is gyrometra. Since it looks a bit like a morel, it's sometimes called a false morel. When you touch it, it feels like cold rubber and it's hollow inside. If I were a bug, I'd like my house to be inside a gyrometra. Some mushrooms produce a liquid that looks like milk when you cut them. We call these lactarious mushrooms. The lactarious indigo is special because the milk it produces is bright blue. I've never found any, but I keep looking. I think they're quite rare. If you see one, you're lucky. I'll be jealous and insist you take me mushroom hunting with you the next time. The puffball is an interesting specimen. When it's young, it's all white and smooth like an egg or a golf ball. Then, as it grows up, it turns yellow or brown or gray. And then something funny happens. If you step on it, poof, it bursts into a cloud of smoke like a cartoon fart. It's their way of freeing their spores. Elegant, isn't it? Some of them are huge like basketballs. We call them giant puffballs. I'm taking a little break from sharing facts to draw my daughter stepping on puffballs. It's too funny. I know I said not to destroy mushrooms, but no need to worry about the puffballs. They like it when you step on them. It makes their spores go everywhere, which helps them reproduce. I really like this one. It looks like something that would grow at the bottom of the sea. That's why they're called coral mushrooms. Some are gray or white or pink, but this one is my favorite. I've seen very big ones. Instead of a cap, it has many fingers that point to the sky. They're very fragile. Be gentle with them. The fly agaric is a very pretty mushroom. I find them all the time. Their caps are red or yellow depending on where in the world you find them. Illustrators, like me, love to draw them in picture books. They're so handsome. When they grow, the fly agaric comes out of something that looks like an egg. We call it fly agaric because a long time ago, people would crush them in milk to repel flies. They're very pretty, but don't eat them. They're toxic. These guys are the king of the stinkers. They smell like dog poop. The smell is so strong that sometimes you smell them even before you see them. They stink like this to attract flies who help them disperse their pores. I've seen some in a park near my house, and believe me, you don't want to eat them. Unless you're a fly, of course. Ooh, Amanita virosa. Every time I see one, I get chills. It's because it's one of the most toxic mushrooms. It can even be deadly. It's sometimes called a destroying angel. To me, it looks like a ghost. So this one, don't touch it, all right? As I was saying earlier, there are so many species of mushrooms. I wish I could tell you about all of them, but that would be a very long book. Instead, I'll tell you about the beautiful mushrooms' names I've come across. Just listen to these names. How poetic. They sound like the ingredients for a witch's spell. Pink Disco, Drab Tooth, Golden Navel, The Pretender, Wet Rot, Grassy Webcat, Dewdrop Dapperling, Ink Cap, Bug Sputnik, Cinnamon Jelly Baby, Bird's Nest Fungi, Funeral Bell, Cat Dapperling, Bald Knight, Bitter Poison Pie, Witch's Brew, Jack-O-Lantern, Lion Shield, Mealy Oyster, Vampire's Bane, Potato Earth Ball, Plums and Custard, Dead Mole's Finger, Hot Lips, Cabbage Parachute, Elbow Patch Crust, Tiger's Eye, King Alfred's Cake, Whiskery Milk Cap, Turquoise Elf Cup, Powdery P 
piggyback, drumstick truffle club, and devil's fingers. Which ones do you like the sound of? When we come back from our walks, we put our treasures on the table and look in our books to try to identify them all. It's so hard. So many of them look alike. So did you enjoy our treasure hunt? Would you like to find out more about mushrooms? There are many books about fungi where you'll discover wonders I don't even know about. Check them out at your local library. And don't forget to take lots of walks in the woods. Have fun now. And in the back of the book, there are mushroom facts. Now, let's go do an activity. All right, let's do a little art project with mushrooms. Now, you can use any kind of mushrooms for this. Uh, I think portabella or the these uh, mushrooms, white mushrooms, um, anything with gills. Obviously, the more gills, the better print if you want to print the gills. Um, but I'll show you what it looks like um, with these. And uh, you can use whatever mushrooms you happen to have at home. So I just have a variety of sizes. And um, I'm going to dip them into my white paint. And if there's a lot of paint on there, you won't get as much definition from the gills, but as the paint kind of wears off a little bit, you can see that a little better. And then you can also make these into cards that you can give to people as thank you cards or birthday cards. I'll use another little one here. Let's see, maybe I'll try this one. I'm using acrylic paint, but you can certainly use tempera paint as well. So you can overlap these, you can get as creative as you want with these. Um, just have fun, It's this is, process art, so uh, the fun is in the process, uh, not necessarily the finished product. If you enjoyed this read aloud and activity, remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss another episode.